Now, Brownsville is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Brooklyn, New York. But one thing Brownsville really don't get respect for is being one of the most talented hoods in Brooklyn, New York. When you think of best style, you think of artists like Biggie, Little Kim, Fabulous, Mano, Jay-Z, Memphis Bleak, and Pat Poos, just to name a few. Now, it seems like Brownsville is always being overlooked, even with the success of Smooth the Hustler, Trigger the Gambler, M.O.P., and health the skelter. It seems like every time someone from Brownsville is put in position to make it big, that dark cloud comes and stops them from shining. Now in this video, we gonna speak on three dudes from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, that almost made it big, but they got hit by that black cloud. Now let's get into it. We got the chin checks, we check this shit, man. Bang, 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 you already know, man. Yeah. They going now. Brownsville. Yeah, we doing it, man. Welcome to the hood. Jinx the Juvie born Derek Carr is a rapper for Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York and grew up in the Langston Hughes projects. Jinx began to rap at the age 12. After the young MC created a buzz for himself, he'll find himself caught in somewhat of a bidding war between Rough Riders and Def Jam Records. Jinx the Juvie would eventually sign a Def Jam Records and teenage Jinx the Juvie will appear on Cool G Raps the Giacana Story album on a song called Blaze with Char. At age 17, Jinx would be shot in his arm by a police officer and charged with attempt murder of that same police officer but Jinx continued to rap and keep his name buzzing on the mixtape circuit. Juvia dropped songs like Off the Hook, BK Finest featuring Fabulous and various freestyles which all would be featured on DJ Clue mixtapes. Although Jinx was heavy in rotation in the underground mixtape scene and had a little success in the music industry, Jinx would still find himself hustling and living a life of crime. While Jinx is trying to make a transition from being a local hip-hop star to the next big rapper to blow, Jinx will find himself in and out of jail due to his legal issues. Now, Jinx the Juvie had made an appearance on MTV's Run's House, BET's Rap City, and a song featured on the Cradle to Grave soundtrack. Now, after years of Jinx the Juvie grinding with his music, he'll find himself in a situation where his dreams could have been cut short. In 2008, August 22nd, Jinx the Juvie was shot in the back of his head after an altercation involving him in Brownsville. The rapper's skull was cracked as a result of the gunshot wound, but he eventually healed completely. Now, around the time Jinx the Juvie was shot in his head, he would start his independent record label called Strong Enough Entertainment and put out his single for Strong Enough, which was featured on BET's Rap City. Now, even though Jinx was still grinding with the music, he still couldn't quite keep himself out of trouble with the law. Mother Simone, get a lawyer get Jinx in jail again. Now, sadly, all the legal issues Jinx was getting into will eventually catch up to him. In 2014, Jinx pled guilty to felony charges of drug trafficking conspiracy and carrying a firearm while drug trafficking in a 15-member Mac Baller indictment. Jinx was sentenced to 25 years but seemingly won his appeal and has a release date for February 15th, 2027. Jinx the Juvie got caught under that black cloud. Browns real fight is cool to be. <laughs> you know your boy Bleezy D O D man. Y'all know what time it is, man. That's a fact, boy. Now Cool to Be is an alleged member of the Gorilla Stone Bloods and Brownsville Wu. He began to make a name for himself by dissing his Blicky and Cho Ops on a song called Blicky's Funeral. He also has songs called Fess Me Up, How You Do That, and Wu Back. Not only was Cool to Be a drill rapper, but he stood out from other drill rappers because he displayed his dance ability that helped contribute to his videos getting millions of views on YouTube. Rapper 6 9 who was the hottest rapper in New York, would be impressed by Cool to Be's Brownsville persona and impact he had at the time as well. So amazed with Cool to Be talent, he would have Cool to Be dance in his video and even name one of his biggest singles after Cool to Be named Cooter. On the outside looking in, it seemed like Cool to Be was going to blow up with the help of 6 9 but that wasn't the case. The ugly truth is 6 9 seemed to be using other guys on the come up to boost his clout. Now, although Kuda B Buzz was going through the roof, it seems like the only offer that was given to the Brownsville rapper was for him to shoot at Chief Keith and return for $20,000. I would have wanted him to put him on one of his singles, take him on tour, anything to help elevate his career. But only offer he had for Kuda we know about was for him to do something that could possibly land a rising star in jail. 
And that's exactly what happened. Kuda B would get caught in that whole Treyway indictment in 2018. Kuda B was sentenced to almost five years in federal prison, but ended up being released early due to the spread of COVID in his facility. But after Kuda B was seen on video with friends, dancing and smoking he was sent back to prison to finish his four and a half year bid but luckily by the time this video's released cool to be a be home but the question is will he be able to pick up where he left off at if not he'll be another victim of the black cloud you already know what it is man brownsville all day man bang bang browns again you know now, Curtis Stevens is a professional boxer out of Brownsville, Brooklyn. Curtis grew up in the Riverdale section of Brownsville and began to box at the age of five. Curtis Stevens was trained by his uncle and had his first amateur fight at eight. The chin checker holds the record for the third most knockouts in New York amateur history. Stevens made his professional debut September 30th, 2004, beating Henry Dukes in the first round. Stevens would remain undefeated for his next 12 fights until he was defeated by by Marcus Primera, but Showtime would end up beating Marcus in a rematch. Now, after only losing three professional fights, Blow would get a world title opportunity against the middleweight champion Triple G, but Curtis would lose in the eighth round after the fight was stopped. Now, Curtis would go on and lose four of his next nine fights, and it seems like Curtis just ain't had that killer instant and spark he once had. Some say he lost it along the way with all the partying he was doing in the club. Some say he lost his hunger and his love for the sport of boxing but in my personal opinion curtis could have reached the same success as floyd mayweather adrian brona and even tank davis but it's starting to seem like rich blow who once was looked at as the next mike tyson fell victim of that black cloud but hopefully curtis could jump back in that ring and bounce back like brownsville is known to do